So this uh, is a kind of a really very typical static, um, very typical static equilibrium question. You have um, kind of a 2D uh, scenario with uh, multiple forces acting. And situation like this um, at this lower division class, we really want to treat it as a static equilibrium because if uh, this were dynamic, maybe if this boom is moving, then you know, it gets way too complicated. I mean, we can deal with it, but it gets complicated, which is why it's nice that it's a static equilibrium. So as a reminder, the static equilibrium condition is that net force is equal to zero and net torque is equal to zero. And this condition equal to zero does really simplify a lot of things that could have been more complicated. So, all right, so let's see here. It says uniform boom. Uh, so, so I think I need to start taking into account the center of mass shown on the right weighs 3000 newtons. So what that means is uh, I can, so with the gravitational force, this is a special property of the center of mass. You can treat the weight that's distributed throughout the whole object as if it's acting only at the center of mass. And all the results you derive from that will be correct. It's a, a special property of center of mass. So there's a downward force of gravity acting on this boom. It is supported by horizontal guy wire. Really, guy wire? Some kind of horizontal wire. Um, so that means at the point where it's attaching, there's a tension force that's pulling to the left. Um, and by the hinge, the support at point A. And whenever you have a hinge, this is kind of um, what you should remember. Uh, the force that's acting here, it can basically be going in any direction. It should be going in the direction that uh, supports this equilibrium condition. So what I'm gonna say is, okay, the tension is mostly going to left. So the, the hinge force here probably need to have some right, rightward component so that the net force can work out to be zero. But okay, there's some force at the hinge. Um, and um, yeah. And so what are the forces on the boom? Due to the wire and due to the support A. Oh, and in the diagram, I see that there's this uh, additional um, mass here and even though it's not mentioned in the text, I guess uh, from this I should uh, include this. Um, uh, so there's a weight <laughs> pulling down on this weight um, and to counter that there has to be upward which is coming from this tension here and that tension means that there's a downward tension of T2 acting on this end point here. So the, I've been, as I was reading through the question, I've been annotating this uh, given diagram to kind of ensure that I'm reading all the questions correctly. And this is actually uh, probably detailed enough that it could work as a free body diagram. But just so that I'm not um, doing the things I ask you not to do, let me draw a proper free body diagram. So the free body diagram for this setup looks like, so I'm drawing a free body diagram of the boom, forces on the boom. And I kind of labeled those forces as I went. So that it's a pretty um, relatively easy for me to draw now that I know what all the forces are. There's a weight on the boom itself. Let me label that W1. Yeah, W1. And there are two tension forces acting on the uh, end point of the boom here, horizontal T1 and vertical T2. And finally, there's a force from the hinge, FA, that's acting at the, um, at the uh, hinge the support. So those are all the forces. So by free body, step number one in Newton's law, problem solving strategy is done. Step number two, I need to define my coordinate axis and, um, and, um, and yeah. So here, um, so 
one thing is always true with the static equilibrium questions that because you have net force equals zero, you do have complete freedom in where you pick your uh, center of rotation to be. If I want you to, I can pick it to be here. Now, having said all that, whenever a problem involves a hinge, it's uh, really convenient for you to pick the hinge as your center of rotation. And it's mainly because when you do that, you make the torque due to the hinge force to be zero, no matter what direction it's at, no matter what. And that kind of uh, separates out your equation more nicely most of the time. So I prefer to define my center of rotation at the location of the hinge. That way the torque due to hinge force is zero and I don't have to, that'll make my uh, net torque equation slightly simpler. So that's my coordinate axis. Um, then step number three, I need to decompose my forces. And it looks like the hinge force will have a vertical component and the horizontal component. And, oops, vertical, I should have labeled it Y. Vertical component and the horizontal component. And, yeah, oh, I guess that's actually one of the questions that it's like, does it act along the boom? Uh, you will see, I think when we finish solving the question, uh, I think you will see that um, it, it uh, doesn't act at 45 degrees. And I think uh, as I'm setting up the equation, what I would like to do, I would like to treat these components as their own separate unknowns and solve for them separately. I think that will help me both answer this question and this question, so I'll do that. Um, so okay, so that's in step number three. Um, so I need to write down the Newton's second law equations, see where I am and go from there. I think I'm gonna need to write down three equations. X component of net force equation, Y component of net force equation, and the um, torque. So the X component of the net force equation is, uh, I have the X component of the hinge force, Fa X minus the torque one is equal to zero. And the Y component of the net force equation, I have the X component of the hinge force, Fa Y minus uh, T2 and W1, T2 minus W1, is equal to zero and um, yeah um, and uh, and you know if you are staring at this equation like uh, as I was then I think after a bit of staring you realize it's not enough equations because I have one unknown two unknown and I think this t1 is not given it says it's yeah, supported by horizontal guy wire but it doesn't give you the tension so I need one more equation. That's why, where I need to have the net torque condition. So net torque, where um, I don't have to worry about hinge force anymore. Um, oh, oh, I forgot to do this in step number three of the standard strategy. I should have labeled uh, these forces as giving clockwise torque or counterclockwise torque. Uh, let me make counterclockwise as positive, clockwise as negative. Um, so I label them now. So let me copy them over. The clock counterclockwise torque, T1. Um, I need a lever arm. So um, the lever arm there will be this distance here. Um, L1, we're kind of looking at the angle 45 degree here. So this is 45 degrees. So this lever arm should be um, the length of the boom, uh, let me label that L times a sine of 45 degrees. A lot of this is gonna cancel out, but let me write it out anyway. Uh, L times a sine theta, that's 45 degrees. Lever arm times the force, T1, that's the counterclockwise torque, that's positive. 
minus the clockwise torque due to T2. So um, for T2, the lever arm is going to be this, which um, you could say L uh, cosine theta minus L cosine theta times T2 minus uh, the weight here. So it's going to be, well, similar triangles, but this is now only half. So it's going to be L over 2 cosine theta um, times the weight uh, that's been given is equal to 0. This third equation didn't introduce any new unknowns. So now I finally have three unknowns, three equations. I should be able to solve for it. And uh, let me do the obvious simplifications first. With a 45 degree angle, we do have a sine theta is equal to cosine theta. So all this writing out this angle, you know, sine, cosine separately, not necessary for this special angle of 45 degrees. Uh, I would have had to be more careful keeping it if it wasn't 45 degrees. And uh, the length of the boom, since that occurs in every single term, I can actually just cancel that out. Um, and uh, I just have to remember that weight is acting at uh, half the distance of the tension forces. So uh, with that simplification, let's see, what do I want to do? So, oh, I guess I want all the values. So um, it doesn't quite matter what I eliminate first. Um, so I think actually I can do it this way. Let me kind of organize it here. Uh, this equation, FY2 equation, kind of stands on its own. It lets me solve for the Y component just by itself, separately of anything else. So I can just solve it right now. The Y component of the hinge force is equal to T2 plus W1. And so that's 2,000 Newton plus 3,000 Newton. It's 5,000 Newtons. That's kind of, yeah, I don't need anything else to solve that. So I'm done there. And I um, think I want to, let's see. Oh, I think I want to first solve this for T1, because then that'll give me the answer that they're looking for here, this tension. And then it'll give me something to solve for um, the X component of a hinge force. So solving this for T1, I get T1 is equal to, move all the other terms over, T2 plus half of the weight. So weight over two. So this is going to be, oh, why did I leave oh, W1? So W1 over two. Um, so it's going to be 2,000 Newtons plus 3,000 over two. So it's going to be uh, 3,500 Newtons, uh, 2,000 plus 1,500. All right, then from this equation here, I see that the, oh, that is also the X component. So the X component of the hinge force is 3,500 Newtons. And this is where you see right away, the answer to this question, does the force act along the boom is no, because the Y and the X components have different magnitudes. So when you figure out the angle, the angle is not going to be 45 degrees. So I can answer no there. Um, and so let me plug in uh, the answers I have now, and then I'll need to work out the magnitude of the hinge force. So 3,500, no, good. <laughs> and you can answer FA. Uh, for that, I just need to use a Pythagorean theorem to combine the X and Y components. Using that, I get uh, um, the hinge force is equal to square root of FAX squared plus FAY squared. Um, let me just do that on the calculator. Can I? Yeah, it's not one of those special values that I would know how to do in my head. Um, so let me do, uh, use a mouse. 5,000 squared plus 
3500 squared equals um, and then take the square root so let me just write it down 6103 uh, does it say any decimals one decimal place so 6103.3 6103.3. So that should be the correct answer. 6103.3 newtons. So, yeah. So that's a, a kind of a um, typical static equilibrium question where you do have to kind of work through the standard strategy. Yeah, because it involves different components and uh, and the question asks for all the values, so there's no... Now, if it asks only the tension, then there are some shortcuts you can take because basically all you had to write down was this last expression here. And I think uh, it's possible to just write down this last equation without doing going through the net force equation. But, yeah.